שלום. שנה טובה, שנה טובה, good year, מלכם אדיס עמי תדרת סאצ'ו, ונדמוצ'י, חיתוצ'י, וטלי, הנאטוצ'י, happy new year, happy feast or festival of the blowing of trumpets, the Zikarona Terua, the Yom Terua. Now, in continuing where we were at, in continuing the particular teaching that we were teaching on, excuse me, we want to touch on this 10 days, the 10 days of what's known Hebraically as the 10 days of awe. What is the ten days of awe? And the Rosh Hashanah, or the Ras Hasana, which is the head of the year, is the Hebrew and the Jewish New Year. It is the first of what's known as the High Holy Days, or the High Holidays, or it's called in the Hebrew the Yamim, Norayim, the Yamim Norayim, or the Days of Awe. So what we want to touch on right here is the Yamim Norayim, which celebrates the ten days before Yom Kippur, the ten days before Yom Kippur. Now, as we have discussed, and as one should be quite familiar with, Rosh Hashanah, Rosh Hashanah is known as Yom Teruah, biblically, in the book of Numbers, in Leviticus. It is known as the Zikaron Teruah, but Jews today call it Rosh Hashanah. And it's observed on the first two days in modern Judaism of Tishrei, even though Yom Teruah and Zikaron Teruah is observed on one day. Now, this is the seventh month. In the seventh month, what's called Tishrei, according to the Hebraic calendar, and. It is described in the Torah or the Orit as a day of screaming or the shouting of the shofar, the Yom Ha Teruah. Ha Teruah. So please listen to the sound of the shofar once again. Amen, amen, amen. So the ten days, what does the ten, what's the significance of the ten days of awe? Since this is the beginning of this period of time, is there anything scripturally in the New Testament or a 
quote, Christian or messianic sense that's connected. A very cryptic portion of scripture, for most Christians at least, is the ten days that are mentioned in Revelation chapter 2. The ten days of or which it says, and ye shall have tribulation, tribulation ten days. Now, what is the significance with this period of time that's known as ten days or called the yamim norayim, the days of awe? Now, there's an illul custom that we are going to touch on and that we'll seek to touch on. First of all, the Yamim Norayim are preceded by the month of Elul, during which Hebrews and Orthodox and religious Jews are supposed to begin a self-examination, a self-examination and a repentance or return to Yahweh Ha Elohim, Eloheinu, to Hashem, if you please. It's a process that culminates in the ten days of the Yamim and Norayim, known as beginning with the Rosh HaShanah, or the Yom Teruah, the Zikaron Teruah, and ending with the High Holy Day of Yom Kippur, or the Day of Atonement. The shofar, or the ram's horn, the shofar is traditionally blown each morning for the entire month of Elul, the month preceding Rosh Hashanah. The sound of the shofar is intended to awaken the listeners from their slumber from their sleep and to alert them to the coming judgment. Now, what is particularly interesting about this from a Christian perspective, and now we as Ethiopian Hebrews and elect Rastafari, or what we will from now refer to as the Hebrew Beta Rastafari Israel, which acronistically speaking would be Hibri or Ibri as in Ibrawiya. What is significant that in the New Testament it speaks of trumpets. If you will do a little study and study in the New Testament when it refers to trumpets. In fact, we still have our crudens. And let us go to crudens for a, a moment. Ande. Bakachu. Ande, let's go to uh, trumpets. Let's look up trumpets. And we prepared this to share with you all because in studying it and reading it, it was very interesting to ourselves. That trumpet in the New Testament sense, we have trumpet particularly in the book of in the book of uh, Revelation. We have trumpet, particularly in the book of uh, Revelation. And in the book of Revelation, uh, Revelation 1 and 10, Revelation 4 and 1, Revelation 8 and 13, Revelation 9 and 14. Now, if you look in the New Testament for trumpets besides Revelation, you will find it under Trump, Trump, not that Trump, but our Trump, Trump. And you will find it in 1 Corinthians 15 and 52 and 1 Thessalonians 4 and 16. Now, what's interesting about these two quotes, these two quotes that we have, 1 Corinthians 15 and 52, let us go to 1 Corinthians 15 and uh, 50, 52. Let's put this here, and we're, we're going to return to Revelation, so stay tuned to the teaching connected with the trumpets, the shofar, 
and with the ten days of the ten days of awe or the Yamim uh, Noraim. So let's go to first um first uh Corinthians fifteen. Turn our Bibles to first Corinthians fifteen and fifty two. You know what's so interesting? What is so interesting is that we have modern day um and religious many of them are sincere in their religiosity jews european polish and jews there, there are many secular ones and we're not speaking about the secular ones but the orthodox and the religious jews who who study and are sincere in, in their faith and many of them who do uh mitzvah and mitzvot and and, and good deeds even for others who are not um Jewish, yet religiously or theologically speaking, they will hold to the Old Testament, that which pertains to the Old Testament and the Talmud and the Mishnah and the Gemara and the and the Halakha and the and the Haggadah and and other such texts, the, the the Zohar as well, right? But not really touch on the New Testament. Many won't touch on the New Testament. They reject the New Testament. Some have learned that that's a mistake, right? And then you have Christians, on the other hand, conversely, and and on on the on the other hand, um, who will avoid seriously studying the Old Testament in the Jewish or the Hebraic sense. So you have sincere Jews who are missing out because they're not making that connection with the Burit Hadasha or the Hadis Kidan. And you have Christians, many of them, who are also sincere, and they will cut off the Belui Kidan or the Old Testament, the Burit, the Burit in the Old Testament to really understand it. And then both groups will tend to look down or cockeyed at ancient Egypt, even though the very same Bible says in Acts of the Apostles 7.22 that Moshe or Musa was learned in the wisdom of the Egyptians or the Egypts, and he was mighty in word and in deed. So that's just a little comment right there, which is very interesting. Now, we and our ancestors, our Sadiq An and righteous ancestors as Ethiopian Hebrews, they understood the mishtir or the secret. This is why holy Ethiopian culture was viewed as being Judeo-Christian. In fact, the Jesuits and the Roman Catholics and others, but mainly the Jesuits very much, when they had come to Ethiopia and caused a lot of problems and, and, and havoc um, to Ethiopia. Because you remember, this was at a time when Jews were being persecuted elsewhere because of misunderstandings in the New Testament because among most of the Christians they had a had a great ignorance to the Old Testament and to the Moshiach being a Jew or being Hebraic to our black Lord and Savior Jesus Christ being a Jew so they so see ignorance Hermes Trismegistus he said that ignorance of the soul is its sin, and the only thing to remedy it is gnosis, is gnosis, is knowledge. You know, saying that's the only thing that can remedy and heal that ignorance and sin of the soul. So the Ethiopians, they were Judeo-Christian. You see, from Solomon, the Queen of Sheba, and from the renewal of the kingdom of David in the highlands of Ethiopia fulfilling that particular 
prophecy that Ethiopia shall stretch forth her hands to God. So when the Jesuits saw that the Ethiopians were Christian or Christian, but they also kept the Seventh-day Shabbat, Sabbath, and they also gathered together on the first day in the Moshiach, which is the Sunday or what we call the Ihud, because Ihud, Bamarinyal, and the Gutters, from the Gutters, the Ethiopic, Ihud is the name for what in the West they call Sunday. We don't call it Sunday, we call it Ihud. And Ihud basically comes from Ahad. And Ahad means one, as in the Shema. Shema Yisroel Yahweh Eloheinu Yahweh Ahad. Hear, O Israel. The Lord thy God is one. The Sema'ab were wallet, were manifested, caduce, ahadu, amlak, ahad. So one, ihud, ihud is one. The first day is Sunday. Therefore, the seventh day is the Shabbat. So Ethiopians, or we should say Ethiopian Hebrews and holy Ethiopia, for millennia observe both the seventh day, the end, as well as the first day, the beginning. And if you know Torah and the foundation of the scriptures, you know that the beginning and the ending of a thing is very important. The beginning and the end. So in that observance of the end of the week, the Shabbat, or the Sendet, and the beginning, the Ihud, where the Ecclesia, the called out ones, who in the day before, on the Shabbat day, were in the Mikrab, or the synagogue sense, or the remembering the Shabbat and keeping it holy as a rest day, they would come out after Shabbat was over and gather together on the first day. This actually was a Hebraic thing, even before it was Christian or Christianized. But Western and mainly European Christians, because of much ignorance and therefore sin of the soul, they persecuted the Hebrews. First, they persecuted the black Hebrews. And then they persecuted the converted Hazar Jews. And this is the half of the story that hasn't been told and is very little understood. Now, 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 52. And this is to touch on Trump. Trump, which is the way in the King James Bible, if you're looking up um, trumpets, the only trumpet references you'll find is in the book of Revelation. This is how King James and the translators thought to translate it. But they translated Trump instead of trumpets in two verses. And these two verses are key verses that we need to understand in connection with the Rosh Hashanah or the Ras Hashanah as well as in connection with the Zikarona Terua and the Yom Terua. First, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 52, it says, In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, at the what? At the last trump. So that means that there were trumps before the last trumps. That there were trumps before, because it says, in the at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed, and we shall be changed. Now, 
this is this is part of the mishtia, the mystery of the ecclesia, uh, the ecclesia, the mystery of the church. And this particular section right here is very interesting because the verse before it, if you are at, at verse um, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 51, it says, Behold, look and see. I show you a mystery. I show you, I show you a mystery is what Harari Apollos, our Coptic Hebraic brother, is revealing to us. He says, We shall not all sleep. We shall not all do what? We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. Now, aren't we in an age of change? Isn't this the main theme? Even the first African-American president, Barack Hussein Obama, he ran on a campaign of change. And whether one will say that he has fulfilled fully or partially that promise of change, one thing is clear. We are in an age and a time period, a dispensation of change. And some great, we've been witnessing some great changes in this particular time. It says, in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised, incorruptible, and we shall be changed. Now, the raising part, the connection with the raising part is the resurrection, which we call Ethiopically as the Tinasai or the Tinshai, the Tinasai, the resurrection. Now, there's a footnote here, and we are not going to touch on it right at this time, but those of the Dekamas Amorit and the disciples and those who are studying with us, you should have a Schofield Study Bible, especially for the English speakers, a Schofield Study Bible. And if you don't have one and you would like to study from this as well, please go to our website at www. LOJSociety.org, and you can download the Schofield Study Bible, the complete thing, for free. So feel no way, you understand it's free at the website www.LOJSociety.org. There's a, there's a paragraphical, let's just show you right here. There's this paragraphical right here that is below the, the reference. From the verse. And the key thing, the key link is resurrection. Resurrection is that particular theme. Now, there's another verse that we want to touch on as well, and that verse is from 1 Thessalonians 4 and 16. So let's go to 1 Thessalonians. Let's go to 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. Chapter 4. Um, verse uh, 16, First Thessalonians. All right. Now, see, this is how we have to study. When it says study and show ourselves approved, rightly dividing the word of truth, understanding the key connections between these scriptures and the theme the theme of these scriptures and, and, and how they connect and, and what they illuminate or enlighten us to, the truth and the reality that they illuminate and they enlighten us to. So, here in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, we are actually going to go to, um, let's start with 14, 14, the whole chapter is really is really a beautiful chapter. We still have the Revelation verses speak about the about the um, the Yamim uh, Norayim or the ten days of war to make that connection. But since we still are speaking about the shofar, you know, saying we need to explain the, the 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 mystery in that sense of the shofar as it is connected to the Judeo Christian sense of it. The Judeo Christians, you see how the devil, Satan, the enemy, the adversary, has divided and conquered. 
because you have the Jews, Old Testament Jews, that understand the Old Testament and very well. Yet they would not have anything to do with the New Testament. And then you have the New Testament Christians that also would understand and comprehend the New Testament basically very well, but wouldn't touch the Old Testament. When the true truth of it is that we need the old and the new. You understand? We need that old and the new. So this whole chapter right here is very important, and this should be one of the chapters that in our um, Hebrew Beta Rastafarius Rael observances and studies that one should study. First Thessalonians um, chapter chapter four. But we, for 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 reference right here, because as my glance is off uh, across this, because this is speaking about the model Halakha, the model Halakha, and the word Halakha is is Hebrew for one's war. Often you'll find this translated in the Bible as one's uh, conversation. They use the word conversation, but it's not talking about conversing just with our mouth, but it's one's behavior, one's character, one's walk. So this chapter is speaking about the model walk or the model halakha, and in the Amharic sense we call the halakha, which the Jews know as one's walk, we call that in the Amharic sense the Akahed, the Akahed, which at its root has Hede, and Hede means to go, or Hede means one's, one's walk. And it also speaks about the Mitmanan. The Mitmanan, Mitmanan is the believer or the faithful. So we as Rastafari Mitmanan, we are the Mitmanan. Mitmanan means the faithful or those who have imnet, who have, who have amen, who have the amen, which is the object, the objective. And the subjective that we are to have is the imnet. And Christ, the Moshiach, shows us that one's faith can be weak or one's faith can be strong. And he teaches the Moshiach, he teaches and testifies, even when speaking to the Sanhedrin, he says, which was a certain Jewish uh, sect, he says that you do err, not knowing the scriptures, nor the power of Elohim, nor the power of Hashem, nor the power of God, Baruchu. Now, this is what this chapter is about, but for our purposes on trumpet, to touch on trumpet, we will begin, uh, let's begin at verse 13, verse 13. But, I would not have you to be ignorant. See, we just touched on ignorance. Not even looking ahead, but the Ruach HaKodesh, the Mensis Kedus that is even guiding this particular lecture and teaching and lesson here, and uh, Rosh Hashanah message. But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, wondermoch, concerning them which are asleep, that ye sorrow not. Don't sorrow for those who are asleep. Even as others which have no hope. Even as others who have no hope. For if we, it says believe, but if we exercise faith, if we admit as true that Yeshua, that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Yeshua, those who sleep in Jesus, in Jesus, will God, will Hashem, Ha Elohim, bring with him. Verse 15, For this we say to you, by the word of Adonai, by the word of Gita, by the word of the Master, that we, I and I, which are alive and remain to the coming of Adonai, to the coming of Gita, the coming of the Master, shall not prevent them which are asleep. Now next to the word prevent, it has a marginal note. Prevent, actually, when you look at the, the updated note, which is in the margin, it says proceed that we will not go before 
to say prevent them which are asleep. When it says those who are asleep, the world would say those who are dead, those who have died, just to have you understand. That is speaking of those who, who have, okay, we're going to have to pick up on this. Shalom Rastafari, we're going to pick up on this in the next part, so stay tuned.